If you're new to coding, you probably have never used Docker. In this video, I'll try to convince you, even as a beginner, even as a new developer, why you should learn Docker. I'm not going to give you any code or anything in this video. This will be a very high overview of what Docker is and what kind of problem it solves. So let's get started. So imagine you're building some kind of application and you're working in a team. One developer is working on Mac, another is working on Linux, and the third one is working on Windows. In these imaginary scenarios, you need to install some configuration, right? In order to build the application, you need to install some front-end tooling, back-end tooling, database, and everything. The problem you might face is, let's assume you, are, you all are trying to install Postgres. Every system has its own configuration, own versioning, and everything, right? So all three developers need to be on the same page while installing those applications or those dependency. In our case, let's say we are taking example of database, right? So the problem that may arise is sometimes some part of your application won't work properly. Maybe in the Mac, it's not working properly or the Windows is not working properly. So what's the solution? So Docker is a kind of technology which containerize your application. Think of Docker as a package manager where you give instruction that I need Python, I need Postgres, I need React. So it gives all the dependency and it will take resources from your operating system and put that application there. So it will containerize your application. If you have Docker, either on Mac, Windows or Linux, Docker is same, right? So you're running your application, not running on the OS, but that Docker, which is running on top of OS. OS means operating system, if you're confused. So when you install Docker, you will install all your application inside the Docker and you'll run your application through Docker. And now you'll be wondering like, how can you download something to Docker? So there is a platform, Docker Hub, where you can get those images. So let's say in our case, it's a Postgres, right? Let's say we're using Postgres version 12. I'm just giving an example, 12.3.2. So every developer will install that particular version of Postgres into Docker and that image they can find from Docker Hub. So you will have your Docker file where you have commands like what kind of base image you're using, what kind of packages you need. So that will be defined in the Docker file. And then you will have your Docker Compose. And if you have multiple container, you will be using something called Docker Compose. So Docker file will have all the instructions like what kind of base image you need and what kind of dependencies you need, right? And Docker Compose will help you to run multiple containers. So, so far we learn what Docker Hub is. We learn what a Docker file is. And third, we have Docker Compose. So for the basics, you just need to learn these three things. And if you're still confused, let's take another example. Let's say you are building an application where you're taking an image from user and converting into PDF. So there are different ways to build this application, right? So one of the ways is to Dockerize your application and run it on a web server. Let's say you are running it on DigitalOcean or Heroku, right? You bought a droplet for like three or five bucks and you're running your application inside that Docker file. So you can connect your main application to that service via APIs. So you can send the photo, it will do the calculation, convert that into PDF and send it back to you and user can download it. So this way you have your services, which is external to the like your main service is and handling everything inside a Docker container. So this is just one example. You can use Docker in multiple ways, but this was just a simple example to demonstrate you the power of Docker. In the future videos, I'll try to go deep and show you some code so that you can see in real time like how this thing works. But in this video, I'm just trying to teach you the very basics, like why are we using this technology? Well, that's it from today's video. I'll see you next time in a new video. Thanks a lot for watching.